No, that's a very famous quote where Austin just gets fed up essentially with, with the Karankawa, I won't call it raiding, but like harassing colonists. And he's, he says it's time to exterminate them is what he says, which is about as bald face bold as you're going to get in, in that. And I think what that shows is the links he's willing to go to, right? But he also doesn't do that. Um, he, he is much more interested in, he's, a, he's such a realist and such a very practical sort of man. It's one of the reasons he's very successful as an impresario, because when he chases the Krakowas away and then they sue for peace, he's like, okay, I got what I wanted, y'all left and we don't have to like kill everybody. Y'all stay over there, I'll go back over here. And for him, that was what worked. I mean, in all things with Austin, his colony was the most important. So he would do whatever it took in, in when it came to Indian relations, when it came to the issue of slavery, when it came to dealing with the Mexican government, whatever it took to help foster the colony and therefore the development of Texas, he would do. And it could be so far as declaring war on the Karankawas, but if he's got a way of not doing that, that's more practical, he'll go that way as well. And so I think it's really important to, like with stuff like that, to show a fuller picture because if you just take one document, it looks like he's a bloodthirsty psycho. Um, on the other hand, he's he's not a pacifist either in this situation and trying to understand that he can he can bridge both those worlds. With the uh, Comanche Road and them coming up to uh, to raid horses, the Americans coming in. How does that play into James Long and um, our other filibusters? Um, you know, coming in to Texas? Good question. Um, the answer is, it kind of gives us a sense that James Long is not unique <laughs> in coming in, right? There's lots of people who have been coming. I mean, back to Philip Nolan, right, at the end of the, at the, in the Spanish era, but there's lots of people who have been going back and forth. So, you know, when I took seventh grade Texas history, you know, in the Stone Age, it seemed like James Long was the first American to go marching into Texas, and that's nowhere near anywhere close to the truth. Um, Long's coming in because you know once the 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 um, 1819 treaty that separates Texas and Louisiana along the Sabine River gets settled, he and a few guys are like, no, we don't want to give up Texas. So he brings in his expedition. And they take over Nacogdoches. There's nobody in Nacogdoches, so it's the easiest takeover in the world. Um, but, you know, he's he's just sort of a, a good example of just how unregulated that border was. And then when you see all these Comancheros coming through, that's long since been the case going on. And that's only possible because of the weakness of the Spanish in the area. So he's just kind of capitalizing on what's already been there. And then he gets chased out <laughs> and he comes back with 50 guys and he's captured and that's kind of the end of him. Um, so in many ways, I kind of, I've, I've de-emphasized that story a little bit because I think it's a, it's, it, it's not the, it's not a representative of what's really happening, which is a lot of Americans moving back and forth with a lot of horses in particular. James Long is just kind of a part of this little expedition that's sort of the exception rather than the rule. Good question. Um, so uh, the Richard Fields was, he's the person that shows up during Fredonian Rebellion, right? Or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So the Fredonian Rebellion, <laughs> its own wacky thing. Um, it happens. Because and part of that is going to be splitting person. the territory between uh, uh, Cherokees and, um, and the Anglo-Americans under, um, under that rebellion. It doesn't work out. But the part of that's because the Cherokees have been trying to get a grant from the Mexican government and haven't been able to get it. And they've been wanting to get official like title. And that'll show up again during the Texas Revolution, because once again, they're going to be trying to get official title to land in the territory that we'll talk about um, next week. Yes. So so that would be so I think including the 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 Richard Fields thing that was presented earlier will be a good anchor for the Fredonian Rebellion, but also, like you said, the Texas Revolution. And don't they get mad even after the revolution during, um, uh, was it Lamar's presidency? There's some kind of issue where they wanted their land and they're like, why didn't we get our land? Or is it- uh, Oh, yes. Oh yeah, during Lamar's presidency, there's a lot of issues um, in a lot of ways. But yes, especially with like the Cherokees, the Shawnees, the Delawares in East Texas, um, you know, Lamar basically just unleashes war on those groups and drives them out of the region for the most part 
Um, so it becomes a, a really, really big thing, which we'll, we'll talk about in great detail um, next Monday. So yeah, you're exactly right.